Week before last, I was invited to be the guest speaker at the Rotary Club over in uh, Graham. I don't know how uh, I get uh, hornswoggled into doing things like that. It, all it does is add more stress uh, to me, and, and, I, and, I, and I, I really don't enjoy doing that. But anyway, uh, I, I went over there, and, and if you're like me, if, if I'm not early to a place, then I'm late. And so, as usual, I, I get there pretty early, and uh, there are some people there, and I walk into the door over at the American Legion building, and uh, as I go in, uh, there are already people in, in line uh, at a buffet. They're grabbing a plate and going through the line and filling their plate and going and sitting down. And so I just kind of stand over there out of the way, kind of waiting for someone to instruct me in, as to what I'm supposed to do. And a few other people come in, and they check their name off of a list, and, and then they go and they sit down, and... and uh, uh, or they, they fill their plate and then they go sit down and then another one comes, another one comes, and another. And, and nobody ever acknowledges that I'm even there. They just walk right past me because I'm standing kind of uh, between the sign-in place and the buffet, buffet line. And so uh, and it's, just, it's just awkward. It's just awkward. I, I'm, just, I'm kind of just waiting for someone to tell me what I need to do. And, uh, and so uh, about that time, I see a friendly face come through the door, and, and he, he's smiling, and he, he sticks out his hand, and he, and he welcomes me and, and uh, tells me, he said, uh, uh, look who I brought with me. And, and I turn and look, and his wife is with, with him, and, and she's just beaming from ear to ear, kind of like a possum digging in a trash can that's got lots of good stuff in it, you know. And, and so uh, uh, as she sees me, she comes up and gives me a big hug, and I say, well, what are you doing here? She's, and with the excitement in her voice, she said, I came to hear you speak. And, uh, and as, uh, earlier in the week when I, when I thought about today, I thought, you know, what, what, if we, what if we all greeted everyone that way? Why, why is it that when we don't know somebody or, or uh, if... Uh, that we just don't greet them at all, or, or sometimes we do know them, and we just don't, we don't welcome people uh, with, with a smiling face and with the excitement in, in our voices. What if we, even the people we don't know, what if we, everyone greeted everyone else with that m much excitement uh, every moment of, of every day when we, when we meet somebody uh, wherever we are? What a, what a difference, I, I believe, what a difference that would make uh, in our world. You know, for this fourth Sunday of the Advent season, we're, we're still in this midst of our Prepare the Way sermon series. And as you've already, you've already guessed it or seen in your bulletin or on our screen, our, our word for the day is welcome. Uh, our word for the day is, is welcome. Welcome is, is an action word. It, uh, welcome uh, uh, pretty much requires a response. Uh, it's, it's how we respond to a person, a place, or a thing, or a situation, or a circumstance. Uh, and we've all experienced what it feels like to be welcomed or not to be welcomed. We have an Old Testament text from uh, the prophet Micah. We're, again, we have one of these minor prophets, this, uh, this little book, minor because it's a small book, not because of his, it's a minor prophecy. It's a great prophecy. Uh, but it's, uh, it's one of those little books at the end of the Old Testament that we, we have a little bit of hard time to find because it's so small in the midst of some other little books. And so, uh, but we have, a, we have a, a, a message from Micah, the fifth chapter, that talks about Bethlehem being the welcoming agent of the coming of God in the flesh to the earth. And then we have a New Testament text, as we've been, we've been doing in this whole series. We have an Old Testament and a New Testament text both. Well, we have our New Testament text uh, will come from Luke again, uh, this time in the first chapter. And, and, and in this Luke text, it, it talks about Mary being the welcoming agent of the coming of Jesus. The, the Son of the Most High coming, uh, coming to the earth. And so I want to take you to those two scriptures this morning. So if you'll turn first to the Micah text, that will be on our screen uh, this morning as well. Or you can follow along in the Bible that you brought with you or one of our pew Bibles. Uh, hear the word of the Lord. Now I'll, I'll begin with verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, 
whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until that time when she who is in labor has brought forth, when the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. And now flip over to Luke, if you will. Luke chapter 1, and I'll read from uh, verse 39 through 55, again on your screen this morning. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is, the, blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant, Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me remind you this morning as we think about those two texts that our whole theme uh, during this Advent season has been, been about preparing the way. And as I've said before, uh, uh, we prepare for everything, pretty much everything. And if we don't prepare, then we're not successful in, in any given particular task. Uh, and if our word uh, this morning, or for this week, if you will, uh, is uh, welcome, then how are we preparing for the coming of Christ uh, in our lives, in our individual lives this year? How are we preparing for the wel to welcome Christ uh, in others' lives so that they might, might experience uh, the coming of Christ in their own lives this year. And as we think about those two questions, I want to go back to Micah and, uh, and uh, talk a little bit about Micah. Micah was a Judean prophet uh, from about the uh, 8th century before Christ. So, so we're looking back about 800 years before Christ. He's, he, he is the uh, welcoming agent, if you will, that God used to deliver God's message, uh, this divine oracle uh, that we have in our scriptures to uh, God's covenant people. And if, you, if you've read all of Micah, you know that the first few chapters of Micah, they're not very welcoming at all. There's a lot of doom and gloom and destruction uh, within those texts. Because the people, the people have been unfaithful. The people have, have not welcomed God in their individual lives. But as we get into chapter 5, Micah uh, announces that help will come from Bethlehem, this, this little bitty small town that, that's uh, several miles outside of Jerusalem. It's an insignificant town. They only know about it because that is the birthplace of King David. Now when the time comes for the new David to be born, his rule uh, will guarantee Israel of uh, this restoration and, and, and prosperity and security. And this is welcomed hope 
as they longed for um, all these years, that they anticipated, welcomed hope that they anticipated would, would come in the midst of their very lives. And, and, and as I think about that, I think about what might uh, this welcomed hope look like in our world today? What might that welcomed hope look like in, in your individual life or, or in our, our community of Olney, our state of Texas, our, our nation, uh, and our world? I mean, we could, we could stretch that for, for, for now on. What might that welcomed hope look like, uh, that, that welcomed hope of restoration and, and prosperity and security? And you may have another word that you, uh, that you need uh, to uh, describe that hope that you, that you anticipate, that you long for. You know, it's, uh, it could be just as simple as uh, a smiling face, much like I uh, uh, described in my opening story when I, I spoke at the uh, uh, Rotary Club. It, just a smiling face, that could, that could be uh, the hope that someone's looking for uh, today. Just something that simple. You know, it's, it's very true that first impressions uh, carry a lot of weight. First impressions, uh, uh, they go a long way. And, 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 you know, experts say what people see and what they experience within the first three minutes, the first three minutes of, of their experience uh, kind of sets the stage for everything else, what will happen, what they anticipate, uh, what they expect to happen, and, and a lot of times what, they, what does happen. Have you ever noticed that when you go to another state and you cross the state line, they have a, a big welcome sign there. Sometimes uh, it's, a, it's a colorful, sometimes they have flowers planted all around it, hedges. I mean, it, it, it's designed to welcome you in, into that state. You know, uh, once you get into the state, uh, many times there's a, there's a big welcome center there that has all kinds of things uh, uh, for the person that is coming into the area. So you stop and you, and you uh, feel welcomed as you come in and, and uh, grab something to eat, use the restrooms, or grab a, a souvenir or whatever, or, ju or just rest a little bit before you continue your journey. But it's, it's, the, it's the same thing with a, with a town. You know, a lot of towns have welcome signs as you, as you go into the town. You know, welcome you, welcoming you into the community. The outside of restaurants uh, usually determines if I'm going to go in and eat or not. You know, if, if they look like they're clean and if they look like they might have good food. Now, uh, I know that there's some of these little hole-in-the-wall places that have some awfully good food. Uh, but, uh, but a lot of times, uh, uh, the outside of the restaurant determines whether I'm going to go inside or not. And you know, that's the same with a church building. Uh, the outside of the church, the churchyard, uh, what it looks like out there determines uh, a lot of times uh, the type of people that are on the inside. Are they welcoming? Is that a welcoming place? Your home might be that same way. What, you know, what the outside of your home looks like might determine if, uh, if you're welcoming visitors or, or, or you would rather they not come by. Uh, I'm not talking about salesmen, I'm talking about visitors. And so, uh, but so, uh, I mean, you could, you could stretch this uh, uh, pretty far. Your business, place of business is the same way. Is, is it a welcoming place? Would I be welcome there? What, what will I experience once I cross that threshold go through that door. You know, as, after we <clears throat> do that, uh, then the experience could be, depending on what we saw on the outside, determine what we, we experience on the inside. When I went to Kansas City earlier uh, this year, uh, drove through Oklahoma, my Fitbit that I wear on my wrist registered 10,000 steps by the time I got through Oklahoma just driving on those roads. They were, they were not very welcoming roads, you know. Uh, had a nice sign as I went into the state, but the, but the, the roads, they, they weren't all that great. Uh, last year, Jan and I, we were coming through Mineral Wells and we were hungry. We heard that there was a place that had wonderful uh, hamburgers. It, the place was called Woody's Burgers or something like that. You may know the place in Mineral Wells. And I told Janet, I, I said, let's, let's just stop there. They're supposed to have good hamburgers. It didn't really look all that great on the outside, but, you know, we were going to chance it for a good burger. And uh, so we got out and we, and we went to the door. And when I opened the door, cigarette smoke just almost knocked me down. And so I, I shut the door as fast as I could. We got back in our car and we went someplace else. It, it, was just wasn't, a, it wasn't welcoming to me. 
when Jan's parents lived in North Richland Hills, I was downtown and I was trying to get to their North Richland Hills and I got off on the wrong road, but I thought, well, you know, they live over there. I'm just going to cut through and, and get over there. And so uh, as I was cutting through neighborhoods, I came to a neighborhood that all the, all the doors and all the windows had bars on both sides of the street. Every house had bars on the windows. And I thought, wow, this is really not a very welcoming neighborhood. I need to get out of this place as, as soon as possible uh, before something happens to me. But, but that's, that's the way it is. I mean, uh, we, we look for things that, that draw our attention. Uh, advertisers use it all the time. If it looks welcoming, it's going to draw us to it. And, uh, and, and, and then we may or may not experience welcoming on the other side of that. So again, what, what might the word welcome mean in our world today? What, what might it mean in our nation, in our, in our state, in our city, uh, in our homes, in our individual lives? Even, even the prophets, after they diagnosed the problem, uh, they followed up with some much needed uh, welcoming words of hope. Uh, all of them, all of them, they, they said, this is, this is what's wrong. This doom and, there may, may be some doom and gloom to begin, but they followed up with these welcoming words of hope. And that is what Micah does uh, in our text this morning. He describes a time in, in verse 3 of our text that, that uh, when she who is in labor has brought forth. So talking about the birth, the birth of Christ. And then after a time, he shall stand and feed his, his flock in the strength of the Lord. So, so they're describing uh, Christ as a shepherd who will lead and who will guide and, 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 and take care of his flock. And it says, and the people will live secure. Now, you know, living over here in America, that might not mean a whole lot to us. But if you live in Afghanistan or in a third world country, uh, to, to be able to live uh, in security, that's a big deal. That is a big deal. And if we look in verse 4, we find that, that uh, he will be the one of peace. And so this is 800 years before the birth of Christ. Uh, Micah is prophesying uh, that this will come and take place. And as we think about that, we move uh, 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 into the Luke text. So, so Micah's prophecy is coming to fruition, and we move into the well-known story of Mary and Elizabeth uh, in Luke chapter 1. <clears throat> and we have two unlikely candidates uh, for welcoming agents uh, of Jesus. So we have Mary, Mary this unwed uh, but engaged teenage peasant girl who somehow gets pregnant and her fiancé is not the father. Uh, and then we have Elizabeth who uh, uh, was said to be barren. She was never able to have children. Uh, plus uh, uh, she and her husband Zach uh, are beyond the childbearing years anyway and, and have no interest in, in uh, that activity uh, at all. But she too ends up pregnant. Now, I don't know about you, but neither one of these uh, situations seem like welcoming news to me. Uh, but perhaps, as, as I'm looking at this and thinking about this, perhaps um, the condition of both of these people describes the types of people or the condition of the people that God is trying to reach more than it is uh, their current situation. So perhaps in those days, uh, God visits a virgin girl, uh, a young girl has, who has not known a man intimately, in the midst of a virgin people, a people who had not known uh, God intimately for about 400 years to be exact if you've been keeping up with the series. That's, that's how long it's been since they've had a fresh word uh, from God. And, and again, perhaps, in those days, God visits an elderly couple, barren and old, uh, described the problem. And therefore, the people possibly were, were spiritually barren and, and not interested in an intimate relationship with God at all. Uh, and as a result, God was basically barren. God was a childless. God was peopleless. So in that sense, uh, this is welcoming news for all of us. Because Mary and Elizabeth, uh, who represent 
each end of the social uh, uh, spectrum and the uh, age spectrum, if you will. You have a teenager over here who is a peasant girl, and then you have an elderly person over here who is barren and beyond years, but God somehow, some way, miraculously uses these two most unlikely people to be uh, welcoming agents for the coming of Christ. And, and, and that's not all. They also welcome the Holy Spirit. So this is one of the first uh, 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 places in Luke where we, we see the activity of the Holy Spirit coming within their lives, which will uh, eventually be the life source for all of us, for all Christians. If we look at verse 41 and 44, even Elizabeth's unborn son, who will be John the Baptist, uh, welcomes the Holy Spirit within his life. The scripture says that he, he leaped for joy. And then we have the remaining uh, of Luke's passage, which focuses on Mary and her welcoming song of praise. Uh, Mary's song... Um, also known as the Magnificent, uh, grounds her, her praise in God's present activity, in God's faithfulness, and uh, God's ancient, ancient promise uh, to God's people. And I want you to notice that the two themes, that, that's the two threads that seem to be woven within this, this song uh, that, that Mary has here, or, or that's been labeled Mary's song. She probably uh, didn't sing it. But anyway, the first thing is that, uh, as one commentator that I read put it in a, in a good way that I wanted to share, that God is uh, the warrior who engages in battle on behalf of God's people and brings them to deliverance. Now, I don't know about you, but, but that sounds like some pretty, pretty welcoming news to me. That, that God is a warrior in my life. That God is, is, is one who engages in my battles. And God is one who, who will bring me uh, deliverance through whatever that is. So, uh, so I, I don't know about you and your prayer life, but I call upon God to do battle for me quite often. Quite often. I... I, I uh, one of my favorite scriptures is one of Paul's uh, letters to the Philippians in, in the fourth chapter. Philippians 4, verses 5 through 7. Uh, Paul writes this. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Folks, if we're, if we're not tapping into that resource, if we're not tapping into that, that powerful source that God has available to us, uh, then, then we're missing out. We're missing out. Because we have a God who, who loves us and, and a God who is with us, a God who is, is willing to fight our battles for us. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 15 says do not fear or be dismayed for the battle is not yours it's the Lord's it's God's and that is welcoming news welcoming news the second theme we find uh, running through Mary's song uh, centers on God's mercy toward those who fear him or, or those who, who have reverence for Him, those who respect God, those who, who welcome God in their lives and, and live their lives accordingly. Uh, specifically, if you'll notice, the lowly and the poor. Why? Well, I, I, I think that it's because uh, the less we have materially, uh, the less distractions we have spiritually. Uh, therefore, uh, uh, the more we realize that, that we need God in our lives and we welcome God uh, in our lives. The scripture uh, in Mary's song says that God has scattered the proud, that God has brought down the powerful, and God has lifted up the lowly. He has, he has filled the hungry, and He has sent the rich away. All of this uh, the, this is, all of this is, is physically and uh, spiritually descriptive of, of a world who welcomes or does not welcome the coming of Christ in their lives. 
And so as we, as we bring this to a close uh, this morning, <clears throat> if God can use a little teenage girl and God can use an elderly person, if God can use the lowly and the poor, if God can use a, a, a know-nothing town like Bethlehem uh, other than being the, home, the birthplace of King David, or even how about the, the uh, hill country town where Elizabeth is said to have come from, but it doesn't even give a name. If, if God is willing to use all these low things and, and uh, uh, out-of-the-way places, to usher in uh, and help welcome the coming of Christ, what might, might God be able to do for you? How might God be able to use you as an, a welcoming agent of Christ in your own life and a welcoming agent of Christ in someone else's life that they might experience Christ uh, for themselves this Christmas? So as, as we close, I want you to focus on being that welcoming face, that glowing face, uh, that excited face that meets and greets and welcomes someone this Christmas. Be that welcoming heart, mind, body, and soul for Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the gifts and the grace that you pour out on us through the prophecies of Micah and, and through Mary and Elizabeth. And we thank you for showing us that we too, as insignificant as we might be, we too can be agents that you can use for welcoming Christ to someone and even to ourselves. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.